Hey guys, welcome back to the Past Money Plan. We're going to be talking about a recent deal I tried to close on, didn't go through. This is my first one, I would say probably didn't go through. Um, so this is a, it was a good learning experience. You know, every deal I work, I feel more and more comfortable with. But um, I'm going to pass it off to you though, Kirby. So in case you got any questions, maybe open my eyes to things I could look out for and such. Uh you're well, not to open yeah it's not to open your eyes about it uh first give everybody a rundown on the deal and then we can get more into it so everybody can be up to date yeah so it was a it was one out it was a single family that looks like a duplex so when you go into the property there's literally a wall that divides the the house and then there's doors on that wall that separates the house then there was only one kitchen and there was only one bathroom. The listing stated two bathrooms. The description stated one. So it was kind of confusing. Uh, but there was only one bathroom. They did look like there was space to add another bathroom, uh, as we talked about. Um, but yeah, it was like so. It, it, and it was an old house built in like 1930. So it must have been something, you know, however they lived back then. But um it could have, I believe it could have been converted into a duplex if done correctly. It would have taken some, it would have taken some money though. Um, but as it stood, it was a single family and I had been looking at it for probably since last month. And I had been looking at it when the price was at 98000 And then when they dropped it to 90000 I had contacted uh, the realtor. But I don't want to keep going on. You got any more questions for it? So, so your plan, so your original plan is you was going to buy it as a single family and then convert it, or was you going to keep it as a single family? So I was going to buy it. My plan was I was going to buy it as a single family. I had a tenant in place. And as I made cash flow from that, I was going to do the repairs necessary over time to eventually then basically get it up to date and then if or when the tenant had moved out convert it to a duplex and then uh you know by the cash flow i would have saved over time right so what was what was the the deal breaker so so you did you ever put in an offer for this deal yeah yeah i put in an offer all right so you put in an offer uh so what what did you what was your offer that you put in? They they had a list for ninety. What did you put the offer in it? So I offered seventy five, and then they countered at seventy eight, and then I had accepted. Okay, okay so you counted at seventy eight. So you got about a twelve to thirteen percent decline from the list price. Right. Yeah. Right, and then they accepted. So for first thing is for all those people that are saying that you can't offer less than the list price, that's BS. I tell you all the time, the only time we do deals is for less than the list price. So again, offer offer less than the list price. The counter was still less than the list price, only what two twenty five hundred above your offer, you accept you accepted offer, right? Or three thousand dollars above your offer, and then you accepted offer. But it still was about twelve to fifteen percent less than the listed price on there. Am I correct? Right, right, right. All right, so now you, you did the deal, offer gets accepted. So what was the deal breaker that made you eventually walk away from the deal? So what made me walk away from the deal, so skipping ahead, was they didn't have any permits on the electric and plumbing. And so it was, it was a weird thing because as, they, as the realtor was about a, the listing agent, as she was about to draw up the contract, um, she asked me, are you looking to close soon? The seller is more than happy to close soon. I told her yes. And, um, basically keeping her up to date, like that I'm already in contact with the lender. He knows about the deal. Once you send me the contract, I'm gonna send it to him and, you know, we'll get through closing quickly. Once I mentioned I was speaking with the lender, she was like, well, you know, this is a cash sale, right? But since the beginning of our conversation, I had sent her uh, the pre-approval. And so I want to show that to everybody. Realtors are not perfect. They don't know everything. 
because she also had told me this deal won't qualify for financing, but it would have under if if there weren't permit issues, it would have qualified because I could have used a conventional loan. Conventional. Most people I I understand buy with like FHA. Is that correct? But with the conventional loan, yeah, conventional. Yeah. So with the conventional, it would have qualified. And then so once I had mentioned that, she was like weary because she was saying that, oh, that's going to add more closing cost fees to the seller. And so she was trying to back off and that the seller wanted to do a cash deal. And I had told her, I said, I had sent you the pre-approval. I assumed you understood I was using a loan. And she was like, I know that's my mistake. So I just want to make that clear because a lot of people, they think realtors know every single thing and every detail and they're perfect human beings. But well, well before, before you before you go there, understand that the realtor, she got caught in a lie. First off. Right. She got caught in a lie because she said, oh, well, yeah, if you're doing a conventional loan, then it'll it'll pass inspection. She didn't know that. No, if you were doing a conventional loan, it still wouldn't pass inspection because there's no permits. There's no permits for the wiring, the plumbing, the roof. Hell, probably you no, know, or or the roof. So even let's just say, for instance, you skirted past all of that. You skirted past that, and you got the financing for it. I mean, now you have now you have rental properties. Would the rental would the insurance company insure that property? No, no. Because the insurance company is going to look for the permits. They're going to look at the plumbing. They're going to make sure they're insuring something that is not a hazard. So the reason, and the realtor on her part, she should have did a better job of advertising, say this is a cash-only offer. The reason why it's a cash-only offer is because the house was jerry-rigged to be habitable for that time. The truth of it is, is the house is probably only worth at its current conditions maybe forty or fifty thousand dollars that's the truth right. because whoever buys that house whoever buys that house besides doing the upgrades moving into a duplex they will have to take out all the plumbing they will have to get licensed GCs to come in there they will have to get permits from the city the county state wherever it works wherever you use investing at for electrical for plumbing and for roof to do all that. So that's another twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar uh add on to whatever that needs to be done. But that is uh that's and when you when you reached out to me about it, I just like walk away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite word, walk away. So <laughs> so but that's what it was. So what was what was your final determination on making you walk away? Besides yeah, me so yelling at so initially I had known that the, so pulling it back, not skipping to the end when I found out about the plumbing and electrical uh, not having permits, but I had known that the roof did not have permits and I got like a rough estimate to replace the roof for like 7,000. And so I knew that if like I could have gone under contract, spoke with the lender, spoke with the insurance, made them aware that I could have either had the roof set up like a scheduled date at closing to repair it or replace it and probably gotten the approval from that or I could have worked something out to get it repaired before closing um so I knew the roof in in seven thousand dollar range was doable um so I knew I was okay there but then um so I was just waiting to hear back because once she was like, oh, you know, this is a cash sale when we're going back and forth. Um, she was like, let me work it out because the seller had used like a wholesaler to sell the property and the wholesaler selected that listing agent. So it was like they were like taking off all the cream from the top. But um, so she was like, let me get with the wholesaler or the broker or whatever, and I'll get back with you on the seller's decision and all that. And so then they had another walkthrough, like another showing. And uh, that person, I guess they had a inspection as well done on the property. And that's when they found out the electrical and the plumbing didn't have permits. And that the seller used a friend from out of state to do, to do all the work. And um, yeah, it was just funny because 
So I guess that person walked away too. They had some other pre people walk away because that's the, the person before me found out there was no permits on the roof. So there's like this house had like no permits at all on nothing. So um so she basically when she told me, I mean she and that's she had told me that the seller wanted to do a cash sale only. And now nah, I mean that was yeah, that was enough for me to because plumbing and electrical would have cost what about twenty five, thirty thousand probably to redo all that. So that would then you you might as well you might as well just convert it to the duplex then because all the money you're paying you might as well add the extra you know soffit and stuff for I mean not soffit but the plumbing for the other bathroom uh you know the another kitchen all that stuff so it's yeah it would have been it would have ran up there cash if he offered like thirty thousand in cash forty thousand in cash and maybe it's a deal to be done but besides that now I wouldn't I wouldn't touch that at all but with all that being said so now you know. All the deals that we do does not go through, but also understand that just like we said, every deal that we do, it's not paying list price. You can't, you do not have to buy the price that's on the listing that you see on Zillow or on the MLS. You should always offer less because the property 99.9999% is worth less than what the list price is that you see on the MLS or these third party websites. With all that being said, please comment below, like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.